Bitcoin? Bitcoin? You want to invest your money in Bitcoin? Uh, okay, Grandma, I didn't realize it was still 2015. Nah, nah. The smart money is in reserve list cards. You hear me? You hear me? All right, I got to go. I'm getting another call. Yo, talk to me, babe. Oh, hello. Yes, yes. I'm trying to get hold of a... Was it the Coast's customer support line? Bro, that's been outsourced to us. MTG Lightning Cash Finance. We help you better understand your Magic the Gathering investment portfolio. I'm not really looking to uh, create an investment portfolio. Thank you, kind sir. I'm more looking to play some Magic. Aha, uh -huh. bruh, did you pay the $9.99? Why would I pay you $9.99? Bro, if you want our financial advice, gonna cost you $9.99 a month. It's worth it, plebe. We are gonna make you so much lightning cash. I'm not really looking to make cash. I'm more looking just to play Magic. Yo, what's your problem, bruh? Well, the problem is my jumpstart pack appears to be a bit defective. It's got, it's filled with fine gravel. And I was more looking for actual magic cards. Yeah, bro, it's fine. It's hella fine. That's what magic investment is these days. Yeah, but isn't magic still a game? All right, listen, bro. Let me just tell you right now. You are not going to make any money off of Jumpstart. It's an unlimited print run, bruh. That's why you got to pay the $9.99. We give you tips like, here's one, VIP boosters. That's where it's at. I don't know if economics is the metagame I want to chase, honestly. Listen, brah, what you do is you take 35% of your liquid cash flow and invest it into VIP boosters. Sure, you're going to open a few duds, but in the long run, you'll be seeing a 35% return on your investment. That's better deal than the banks, brah. But what if I don't want to keep spending my money to crack packs to see a return on investment? Then just invest in some speculation rares, brah. Did you say speculation rares? Yeah, bro, we'll give you those tips at the 9.99 level. Like before the last BNR update, we told everyone buy up Splinter Twin in case it became unbanned. If it had, ooh, would have made so much money selling it up at jacked up prices. But they did not unban Splinter Twin. Long term, bro, you gotta think long term investment. That's what the 999's for. I'm sorry you're losing me. What was the 999 for? Bro, the 999 keeps us in business despite our consistently bad financial advice. If we actually had good tips, you think we'd hide them behind a paywall so no one could ever see, bro? Sure, sure, sure. But I've also got a VIP booster here, and well, there seems to be a calibration issue with your printers. It's, uh, it's full of cold, hard stones. Bruh, Draft needs them to put a few rock rares in there. Sure, that's no fun to open up, but in the long term, spend a few thousand, you're gonna make your money back. No, no, I mean literally, literally like tiny rocks. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dies to Removal, everybody's favourite Magic the Gathering podcast with a Brit and an American. It might be the only one with a Brit and an American, so it's not really much to choose from. Today, myself and my lovely co-host Brian. How are you, Brian? I guess I should let you speak. I'm I'm good. Are we are are we really the only Brit X American magic podcast? Let us know in the comments below. It has to be a British person. And an American person. So I, I, I can't and no think other, of them. No other nationality them. combination. No other. I don't want to hear Australian, can Canadian, or anything <laughs> it, like that, or <laughs> Russian, Japanese. Is this your favorite? Your favorite British. failed teacher podcast? Because I'm a failed teacher. Yes. And you're an ex teacher. So this might be the best Magic the Gathering podcast involving two ex slash failed teachers. Is if it is, there's a lot of failed. Know. There's a lot of failed teachers in Magic, actually, in Magic content creation. Right. Not in play in Magic content creation. I have found so many failed teachers. It's it's lovely. Those that it's those that can't They're usually teach, math. Those that can't teach. Content, I guess. Anyway, today, yeah. today we're talking about the topic that's on everybody's lips, everybody's minds, all over Twitter, all over Instagram, everywhere. It's double masters. I was a good teacher. Oh, no one cares, Brian. People only care about double masters. No one cares about your previous career. Double masters? Oh my gosh, but Jumpstart literally just got released. Have you been enjoying playing Jumpstart, Vince? I sure have. I have not touched a physical Jumpstart card. However, I have played like seven or eight drafts on Arena, and I've enjoyed 
all but one of them, I think. Where yeah, like right. I generally think the format so is. J- great. Jumpstart hasn't come. You were telling me before we started filming, Jumpstart hasn't arrived. Exactly, exactly. So it's officially oh. out everywhere in the world, right? It was out on the seventeenth or whenever it was, and uh, stores are allowed to sell it as soon as it arrives. The question is, when will it arrive? Because we all know, as you said in your video, it's it's uh, low in stock levels, so people are buying boxes right. for hundred to two hundred dollars over here. People are trying to buy them at like one hundred fifty quid and stuff like that from other countries. As you said, I'm just going to reiterate, don't do that. Just just wait for them to yes, print no. more boxes. Um, right. So yeah, so Jumpstart has not arrived, but it's fun on Arena. The interesting thing is, I don't know if you know, realise this, but the Arena version of Jumpstart and the physical version of Jumpstart will play differently because a lot of cards have been removed yep. from Arena, like Shieldred, for example, and Reanimate. So that means when you come to play the physical one and the paper one, they will be different formats. So that's exciting. So at the end of the apocalypse, in about two years' time, when I can physically go into a game store and play Magic, I'll get to play a brand new Jumpstart. It'll kind of, kind of be retro by then, but also different. So that's fun. I really wish digital matched paper always. I always wish that was the priority, was digital and paper, with exception. I mean, with reasonable exception, match. I agree. I agree. There's this this point that people, quite a few content creators talk about where they could digitally balance cards to make formats more, like, interesting and, and, like, you know, nerf things. And I think that's a slope that I don't want to go down because I think that will make things very confusing. And I kind of like Paper Magic 2, so I'd like if the two existed and lived together, not one drowned out the other, for example, as much as certain companies wouldn't like that. We're not talking about Double Masters at all. We're not even close to double masters. When does it release? If people are people only tuned in to hear us rag on double masters, and and so I want to be really clear. It's the first week of previews. We have seen just a fraction of the set, so you're tuning in to hear hot takes like double masters, more like double disappointment. <laughs> well, here's a, here's an interesting way to like place our conversation within a time frame controversies because there'll be more before the spoilers are over so we've just gone past uh masterpiece no no sorry box topper expedition map and tron lands that has happened at time of recording and we've discussed this on twitter and and maybe we'll talk about it now uh that's happened uh that's the last controversy right so if there is another controversy during this spoiler season i guess some of some of the rares a lamp a champion of lamb halt and that, that giant that makes you discard a card all of those just happened too and the pricing of vip masters we're aware of all of that Anything I have not That's mentioned our past. is in the future. Has not yet happened. Hopefully this is coming up. I, I want this up on the weekend before week two hits so that we're in sync with our, our audience. But if it's maybe doesn't get up till Monday and there was the Monday uh, uh, controversy, I apologize <laughs> that we can't days. comment on the Monday controversy. Yes. There's three so days it, for it controversy It did get delayed three days. Ugh. Well, a three days, one controversy is actually Wizards improving its controversy <laughs> ratio and, and, and such. So we can really hope that it's only one controversy every three days. I want to say... That while there are many things that frustrate me about Double Masters, I don't feel it's double the disappointment. Uh, I like Double Masters in almost every way except the freaking price tag. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I I feel that it's a Masters set. And I think I said this before we saw any cards from it in an earlier Dice to Removal, as I said, we know what Masters sets are look like. We know how Wizards makes master sets. We know how they're made up. All the good stuff at Mythic, a couple great rares, and then a whole bunch of stuff designed for draft. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Whether it's double the rares in Mythics or just one rare in Mythic per pack, that is how a master set has always been made. I think they could be made differently, but if they just didn't price them literally more and more with each Mm -hmm. new set, Mm -hmm. I would have less and less of a problem with them. If I could go down and draft this at a reasonable price, you know, all the emphasis on draft matters, which, by the way, Mark Rosewater just put out an article talking about the behind the scenes and and everything in that article is talking about how important the limited environment is, how important the theme of the limited environment is, how they feel that players were having reprint fatigue. And it just shows what their priorities are. Their priorities are on a great draft environment and, and they're worried about reprint fatigue. You know, they're reprinting too many things. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. They're reprinting Champion of Lamb. They're reprinting Colossal Dreadmont. I mean, too we, much. we are fatigued with the cards that have like getting reprinted. There were already fifty cent cards that were reprinted like five times. That's fatigue. But I mean, I Those, I haven't seen yeah. a, a pack Fresh Misty Rainforest for literally like a decade. So I mean, what the hell are they all about? Um, the price thing is just an interesting point because like, so to clear something up and put my stance on, to calibrate our opinions yes. so the audience know where we're at because they might not have heard this before. I love master sets. I said it on this podcast before. I've said it on my channel before. I use usually draft them on stream or in videos like three or four times for each one minimum i normally go out of my way to draft them at gps when they existed pre-apocalypse but the thing that is the worst thing about it is the cost because if you want to draft it you don't want to spend like ten dollars or in the case of england ten pounds a pack which is a, a, a 20 percent bump up from your prices because of exchange rates because that's 30 pounds a draft which is normally like that's almost three drafts of normal sets so the price tag Vince, is it costs the... twice as much as that now. It costs twice as much as that now. Wait, well, how much is a how much is a double up masters pack? Double up masters, double up masters. Fifteen. It it was sixteen. Fifteen. Oh, of sixteen dollars. Double the prone. Okay. Now, and and I love how people are saying, "Well, wait a minute. Now, if it's sixteen dollars a pack and it's two rares, then that's eight dollars a pack. So that's less than Ultimate What's Masters." Draft, it's like, it's not. shh. Yeah, right, right, right. Sure. If you're if you're doing what everybody knows you shouldn't do, which is just buy a box to crack packs and get value unless you're in finance or something, then then you're you're supposed to be going in. I mean, if draft is what matters. So here's a finance check does. for you. So usually, like I said, the, the packs yeah. are at twenty percent premiums. Like so what's the average booster pack in America? Four dollars? Four bucks, yeah, yeah, four bucks. So here it's three pound fifty, which is only marginally below. Right. It's probably still dearer by exchange rate. Uh, from a website that's normally quite expensive in the UK, you can buy a singular booster now, or pre-order a singular booster for eleven pound ninety-five. So that's that's a markedly different. That's like five uh, dollars or pounds less. That's really interesting. So actually, yeah, for the first time ever, I think our masters packs aren't priced to. Di- I could again, some of the comments actually tell me I'm wrong because they bought tons and tons of single boosters of the uh, other master sets. But for the first time ever, they're slightly cheaper in the UK. So that's nice. The VIP ones aren't though, but we'll get onto that in a moment. They're dearer here still. But, um, yeah, so a draft will cost you at least, in England, £36, and where you are, 45 50 It's 60 Oh, it's insane. If you're lucky. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, so, it depends on prize support. Is is the store going to... Mm-hmm. Well, the store can't hold events. So, there's no drafts going to happen. <laughs> so, we're, we're literally talking about how The stores are not allowed to own... Like, like, if it were not a pandemic and stores were holding events, the next question is, is is this a store? And every store is different and players have different desires. Uh, some players like heavy prize support, like they'd want prize support and double masters packs. And that's harder for the store to do. So it has to charge more money for the entry. Other people are like, yeah, fine. Prize support in, in core set packs or whatever. And the store can, you know, do a lot more prize support at a lot at a lower cost. Or some people are like, it's okay if there's just a couple packs to the winner and we're just here to draft. Every store is different, but yeah, 50 to 60 bucks is what I would have would expect for this. Well, that's if that's if the print run is also good, right? What if we have a low print run? Like then we're going to have those drafts are going to especially by the time it gets to draft, this thing's going to be so rare. Cuz I forget the original model masters, those the drafts just doubled in price within like a year, right? Like what was ever left of it. Store owners have have reported it's preliminary, but store owners have reported that there has been about a 50% cut in uh expected allocation of double masters, meaning that there's going to be a lot less of the regular double masters packs. However, they've reported no cuts to the VIP packs. It sounds like the punchline to a joke, Brian. It's that that sounds like the punchline to a joke, but it's it's actually not a joke. Like a dark joke, yeah. like a Twilight Zone joke. But it's like it's the rea- it's the reality. The reality is here's the set that is meant to be focused around drafting. It's being released. I I argue that Jumpstart should have been delayed so people could play it physically in paper, but that's another right. conversation as well. But yeah, so this this limited focused set is being released during the pandemic when most stores should be or are closed. I mean, we are being a bit like I guess ethnocentric in some ways because there are places in this world that have treated COVID correctly and now reopening correctly. Right. So like Italy and places, for example, have got their stores open as far as I understand. So they could draft it. So I guess maybe it should get released. But either way, released during the pandemic, not as many packs, but the expensive parts that can't be or can be drafted if you're like, I don't know, one of the 1%, uh, those are in seemingly limitless supply. It's a joke. Right. It's literally a joke. Huh. Well, that's, well, thanks for watching. That's that's our consensus. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's. I want to talk about 
I want to talk about what I love about yeah, Double Masters. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that because that's that's more of a positive spin than I guess we've already got to the to the dark underbelly. Let's talk about the good stuff. Um, Vince, why don't you start? Okay, okay. Are you leaving that pause in? Because <laughs> that's almost like you don't have anything good to say. <laughs> well, I realized. I realized. <laughs> I realized what I like isn't actually in Double Masters so much as in the Double Masters booster boxes, which are the box toppers. Right. The thing that I'm really the the thing that really has my attention is I love these box toppers. I love the box topper art. Uh, they have chosen to go with a style. Uh, that seems to be reminiscent to magic art in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Some people don't mm-hmm. like it. Like there was a whole thing over Karn. I love because, it. I and, love and, and that card. Yeah, I, I love it because it's memorable. Yes. It's memorable. What do you want? Another piece of art that you forget about? How many pieces of art can you think of from from the last, yeah. you know, from three sets back? Well, of Khan specifically, they all look very similar. They all look very similar. It's crazy. That's kind of good. It's memorable. People are doing these Photoshop things where they've got, like, Karn dancing with the woman from Sound of Music because his arms are like this. <laughs> and I love it because you can't normally do stuff like that. It looks you know, unique and distinct and wonderful and I, and and corny and nineties and I love that about it. It looks like Korg from Thor Ragnarok and, it does. and, and it's it does. it's great. But that's Korg from Thor Ragnarok is a comical character and, and and goofy and rocks are falling off of him and he's growing moss when he doesn't move enough and, and it's like that's a joke and it's funny and I like that we can have a little bit of doesn't take itself too seriously in magic art and a lot of the other art does take itself seriously and looks fantastic. I love those box toppers. But, of course, those aren't in uh, the exactly. booster packs. I want to ask you a question, though, to, to hold us to accountability yeah. on, the, on the whole box topper thing. Is Cast your mind back to Ultimate Masters, because I was initially very critical, and I, I did very publicly say after in my videos going, do you know what? This is the set is round with value. The box toppers end up being you know 95% to 90% great, and so on and so on. Where were you on the box toppers then compared to now? I loved them. Okay. I, I I loved. I said Ultimate Masters was the best Magic the Gathering Masters set ever made, with the exception of it missing out on having five of the ten fetch lands mm-hmm. in it. I said it needed that, but other than that, I, I uh, the draft I personally felt it was amazing. The draft and limited was environment so was amazing. The value was packed. I loved. Like I understand there was issues where some of the box toppers got damaged, but the premise of well look. Go buy a box from your LGS. They don't have booster boxes at Target and Walmart, or if they do, they're incredibly rare and hard to find. Mm. So for the most part, uh, uh, go buy a booster box from your LGS. Support your LGS. You're going to get a box topper as a little reward. But then they jacked up the price. Mm -hmm. And I said, this should be the exact same price as as Masters 25, as as Modern Masters 2017, which had the fetch lands in it, things like that, and and that that box topper should be a gift, not a surcharge. And they were using the box topper as the excuse, much as they're using well, there's two two rares, your Champion of Lamholt, and a whatever dollar rare in your pack to to justify the increase in price. Spoiler alert: that one common that they took out of packs to make room for the extra rare cost them the same to produce. So there's no reason that adding a second rare increases production on their end for packs, so it's the same cost to them to print a Double Masters booster pack as it was to print an Ultimate Masters booster pack because it's just printed on cardboard. Sorry to tell you Santa Claus isn't real, but it's true. And, uh, uh, spoilers, and and so my stance on Ultimate Masters was was Wizards of the Coast self-sabotaged. They made the greatest product, yeah, okay. and then they said, we made the greatest product, let's charge more for it for no reason. Yeah, It cost the same for them to make as, as Ma- Modern Masters 2017, uh, and Masters 25, which was a dud. How come Iconic Masters and Masters 25, which were total disappointing sets, didn't cost less because they were so crappy? <laughs> like, like, how come because why, we've got... Two, why does the door only go one way? Said, why does the door only go right, one way? Right, why does the door only go one way? Why didn't they say, you know what? It's Masters 25. We really screwed the pooch on this one. None of the Iconic cards from most of these sets are in here because they're expensive. We put... A uh, tree of redemption as the iconic card from Innistrad, original Innistrad, not Snapcaster Mage, not Liliana of the Veil, vale, not any number of classic iconic cards, and we did that for most of the sets. It's it's got no value in it except for Jace the Mind Sculptor. So you know what? Instead of charging ten bucks a pack, we're going to charge you four bucks a pack, and we're really sorry. You know, and and you know what's funny is that if they had said that. It would be the most celebrated master set of all time because people could have gone in and drafted and had fun playing the game and not treating it like an investment portfolio. 
And 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 it would have like it would have just sold out. Well, it would have sold out because they didn't print very much of it. They could have printed well, as much as is, people uh, wanted uh, of it. Um, Masters Twenty Five was the one master set where boxes are still like are they still readily available from like every store because they still hasn't sold out. No one wants it. It's gone up in price a little but, bit. Of course, uh, some of the cards not, go, go yeah. up and up. But yeah, it's the only one where they didn't just get like hosed because the value just wasn't there. Right, but like yes, right. so that's that's the positives. Okay. We're done with the positives. No, 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 that's, no, 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 no. I'm joking. I'm joking. But I love those box. I love the box toppers. I love the box toppers. I love the art. I love everything. The re- the reprints. The reprints are worth talking about. Like uh, there are some some whiffs, and there always are with every magic set. Like uh, whether or not you believe this should be the case or not. Like unfortunately, it's just the way that magic sets are designed. They always have been, and probably always will be. Like Cragwick, Cragwick, Cremata, that giant thing. But like Noble High Rock, Doubling Season, Dark Confidant, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Khan yeah. Liberated. Like, yeah. I assume Arkham's yeah. Daxum was worth a bit. Cyclonic Rift with alternate arts available too. Like, so far. The, al- the alternate good. art is only in the box toppers, and uh, the box toppers are only non foil in the box, but they're available foil in the VIP. Yeah. Is there is there no so there's no showcase frames in this stuff at all? That's something I find very weird. That we've 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 now gotten used to there well, being showcase yeah. style frames in like every set, right? Every set has had them now. Every every main They're in the line VIP set. packs. No, 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 the VIP the pack VIP has pack. it has the box topper oh. pushed out frame, and right. then it has that's the that's, yeah that's yeah. what I mean. Oh no showcase no showcase. There's yeah. no like uh, I don't know some mirror reflection of old art and new art to celebrate the double thing. Or like you know anything like that. They could have done all sorts of cool stuff with it. And it's a, that's, a, that's a minor gripe. It's just a minor gripe from a. It, co- it costs money to commission that stuff, Vince. We've, they've, they've, that is true, and you know with the they've got a business to run, and they, you know with the rising prices of magic cards. There's, I mean, m- maybe some of that budget could have gone to. I was trying to think of a way to say it sarcastically. I can't. If the co- if the packs cost more, surely then we should have showcases and stuff, right? To the commission showcases and stuff like that, but. They cost more because there's two rares in every pack. Yes, I guess the gold ink costs more. So than you the don't just ink. and you're being you're mis being misrepresentative here because you don't only get a Cragwick Cremator, you also get a Stone Hewer Giant right. in in your pack, and and that's why it costs more. A heat or a heat. Look, shimmer. I love Stone Hewer Giant, but not in limited and not in my my premium packs either. So let's talk about what bad rares are there, right? Like I love master sets for the limited environments, as we said, and every time they come out, I'm phantom drafting the ever loving uh, sugar puffs out of this or Modo because I do that for every master set. Cause I love master sets on the whole. They also have really powerful, almost cube like feels to the limited environments. So a lot of these rares fill those kind of slots, right? However, the reason that everyone is upset is because they are in a product that costs twice, three, or maybe even four times the price of a normal booster. That's why Grim Lava Monster and Stone Hero Giant feel fine. And Stone Hero Giant isn't even good for Limited. That's stupid. Right. Why is it even in well, the pack? Well, Limited needs, because Limited needs bad rares in order for you to, uh, like, they've said this, you can't have every rare be a bomb rare. Otherwise, you just, like, like what are you going to do? Have a cube? <laughs> but no, you got to have bad rares intentionally so that, you know, like, it, it's a spectrum. That's how limited works, except in cube, where we put the best stuff in and people have the best experience. I guess a five mana four four right. with vigilance isn't actually that bad. I'm being unfair. To, in limited, a five mana four four with vigilance isn't actually that bad. I'm being a little bit unfair. I am, I am so sick and tired of your stone hewer giant like hypocrisy it's it's a decent rare I, lo- in I play it in commander i just don't ah oh, just i'm i will defend i will defend bad rares pack. i will defend bad rares if i'm playing a phantom draft on modo right but i can't defend bad rares if they're also bad like mediocre to poor and god damn it trash for treasure got downshifted though that's a that's nice. They down they downshifted Voice of Resurgence. This was a mythic that was once fifty dollars each. Is it called? Is it rare this time round? And they they downshifted it to rare. It's probably going to be like a two two dollar rare because nobody plays with it anymore. Give it five so years, Brian, also a problem. and Voice will be an uncommon. Yeah. That's where the power creeps going, Brian. That's where the power creeps yes. going. Right. It's it's funny because that Mark Rosewater article talked about how one of the things they struggle with with reprints. And it was so, I encourage people to read this. And I don't mean any shade at Mark Rosewater. I think it's a, it's an insight. So 
Rosewater does not have complete control or anything, and Rosewater is not like, you know, God at Watsi or anything, but it's a great insight into what are they thinking. And they he talks about things in there about being concerned about not reprinting the same card too many times in a short window. And yet we have countless examples of this. I just, it's Chandra signature spellbook, which only had eight cards in it. One of them was Cathartic Reunion that was reprinted at Common in the current set that's out in Ikoria at the same time as signature spellbook. And it's like they took up one of their eight slots for a card they knew was going to be at Common and Standard because of theme, because Cathartic Reunion is part of the Chandra theme, and they feel that trumps putting a good reprint in there. And that's also what the article talks about because Rosewater says theme is what's important to people. And so that's why we opened with doubling masters as the theme and not just the double the rares, but we were showing the the, the reflections where some of the first cards spoiled, Champion of Lamholt, which will work with the reflections and the idea of counters. And that that is what they're putting forward and saying, this is this is what, what you're interested in. And I think that this is why that article is important is because it shows an incredible disconnect between Wizards of the Coast and its player base. Uh, and I don't, again, mean that as any disrespect to Rosewater. I think that it's 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 just they they do not know how to make a master set right for players because they don't seem to understand what players want. They They, they make it cost more and then they make it for draft first and foremost. And they don't seem to understand that one contradicts the other. They say, well, people are getting reprint fatigue when in now eight master sets, mm -hmm. we've reprinted mm -hmm. five of the 10 fetch lands once. And they say, well, we, we don't want to reprint things too often. And I know that that's a tired well at this point, but there's a million other examples. There's a million other examples. Yeah, meanwhile, Bosch Iron Golem, which was in Mirrodin originally, then Plane Chase, is a bit, oh, you know, this is a 20 cents card, by the way. Then Commander 2014, then an Anthology, then Commander 2018. So this thing's had, this had, once had twice as many reprints as any fetch land. And there it is in Double Masters. You can get your 20 cents Bosch Iron Golem, which doesn't fit the theme of doubles. Um, it is an 8 mana 6 7, no. That's, that's all right for limited. Yeah, so. so <laughs> So, so meanwhile, cards we've seen in Commander decks year in year at Sunforger as well. Is at a point where we've seen it a million times before. So this the whole reprint fatigue thing. I I feel that's complete hogwash, honestly. Like people are excited for reprints, Ugins and Azuses and Crucible of Worlds. Those things got people excited. But I think I think they do. I think they do, no. I think they do know how to pick them. And I think there's a, there's a restriction going on somewhere at Watsi, at Hasbro, wherever it is. That is someone telling them what they can and can't reprint for some reason. They start with none the of theme. these cards are on theme. I mean, we have only got like I, I don't know one fifth or quarter of the spoilers at this point. So there could sure. be a load of double up stuff coming. But like, what's double up here? Two reflections. The whole reflection cycle will be in right. And then we've got... Also, what a weak theme. Like, if you took away the fact that there were double rares in, in each pack, du never mind price, just, just, let's just say that, let's just say that they called it double masters and it was the normal uh, uh, price and the normal number of rares. And, and we're like, okay, so what's the, people would be saying, what's the double? So that, talk about a weak theme. Mm. People would be saying, what's the double, double up counters, double up creatures. They had to do double rares because otherwise, double masters doesn't make any sense. I think that's a theme. So, so like ultimate masters, although they didn't really market it this way, apart from some blurb on the back of the box and the the, the icon with a skull and stuff, it was all about graveyards and recursion, right? Right. And, we all learned, and, and when you played limited, it felt that way very much. So, things that interact with the graveyard was at an absolute premium. Doubling up or just double as a theme that doesn't sound like a theme that you come up with in a creative meeting. That feels like a theme you come up with in a marketing meeting when they're thinking about how ah. you sell it. You're like. Well, we just give them double the value, but then they charge double the price. So it doesn't really matter. It's like, you know, when they right. charge 99 cents, so you think you're not spending a dollar, that sort of thing, right? That is not a creative decision by a creative person. That is a marketing decision by someone trying to sell boosters right. to someone or the concept of selling boosters to someone. It reminds me of that Simpsons episode where they're trying to push out another holiday. Greeting card company wants to force another holiday to, so that they can sell greeting cards on an extra day. And the guy in charge says, just come up with something like Love Day, only not that stupid, and walks out of the room. And then it turns out they go, all right, Love Day. And and they, they just took that kind of directive. And I feel like that's exactly what happened. Where where And again, if you read this article by Rosewater, he literally says, so we said... 
that we're, we're done with master sets for the foreseeable future. And then it took six months, he says six months until, and you have to read between the lines on this a little bit, but he essentially says, if you read between the lines, that we were instructed that we needed another product. It needed to be a big selling product. It needed to be a high revenue product. It sounds like Hasbro walked in and said, we need to invent a holiday for our greeting card company. I mean, we need to do another thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and and it needs to be epic to justify the fact that it needs to be more money than anything ever before. So uh, double masters are just not that lame. And then walks out and then it's just like, yeah, so like double up cards. <laughs> you know, like it just feels yeah. like that Simpsons joke. And and that's exactly, it, it has an interesting connection if you read that Rosewater article where he basically says, yeah, and in, in about six months, we had to do another product. We needed a big product there. And uh, so we said we weren't doing master sets, but what else are you going to do? <laughs> you know? And uh, <laughs> they, they needed to charge a lot of money for it. So we said swap out a common for a rare because that doesn't cost us anything. And uh, mm-hmm. that'll justify a higher price tag. And uh, we've been doing collector's boosters at $25 for a pack of standard. So let's do VIP boosters for if this, people at 100 if this is If this is Double Masters, right, it will be... We'll, we still have the full spoiler, but I'm just going to make some, not predictions, but things that I think will be an absolute missed opportunity, right? Double face cards. There should be double face cards. They're called double DFCs, double face cards. We're talking Garrett, we're talking Delver. And then if you have a double face card sheet, you can do Bruna and Gisela that flip and merge because right. they're two things that come together. Double. So there's those things, right? And I guess the cards that flip, I know they hate them and I know they're a mistake, but it's two cards in one. There's all these things that could fit the double theme Split that might cards. show up in the coming week. Because they are called double faced, right? Flip cards officially yeah. are called double faced cards. Yeah, you can get, you can put Gideon, Flippy Jace. Flippy Jace is a popular card. All right? the Flippy Planeswalkers. Well, they just did that, yeah. but they just did from the vault Flippy Planes. The last from the vault was Flippy Planeswalkers. Oh yeah, from, from the, the vault, vault double flippy, faced cards. Flippy, flippy Planeswalkers. No, it's it called. Was it called? I don't know. That's a better name. But wasn't it called from the vault double faced cards? DF. Yeah. Oh my God! It was. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Double but, ma- from the vault, double masters. <laughs> yeah. it, it, that might maybe that was where the initial seed was at some point, where someone was like, "Just, just, I don't know." But, yeah, uh, that's exactly. I am, I am very these... much looking forward to drafting this. It's got like a, it's not like uncommon like flicker wisp and blade splicer in it. But the point is, I'm not going to get to draft it in paper because of the pandemic, and also drafting in paper is kind of. I mean, I guess if you're trying to see if you're going to open up value and justify the whole drafting thing, there is two foils in every pack. And foils do cost, I assume foils cost more to produce than non-foils. So sure, that's but you're something. talking about a, 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 a minimal cost. You're talking about a very minimal cost. Sure, sure. But that There's is... There's no way that it's like... It's it's like... It costs we have to give credit nickel. where credit is due, and there is going to be right, two, two foils. foils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm afraid that, that there's a point, and I want to address this idea of there there's value here. A lot of people with hashtag MTG finance have been riding up my backside and they're very, very upset about criticism of this. It's interesting that, that, that the MTG finance people are upset at people criticizing this because it's good value because you'd think that like, I don't know why they have such a personal stake in, in the average non-finance player feeling priced out and being upset about feeling priced out. But they do, and they've been up my backside like crazy, very angry and irate and saying this is jam-packed full of value, that those VIP, $100 VIP boosters, that if you, you, you go and you put your money into that, you, you can, you're, you're probably going to get really big returns. It's going to just be, you know, like, like the price is too low and things like that. And I say, I don't care. Like, I'm not arguing. I'm not saying that the VIP packs are necessarily if i were to drop a thousand dollars on them and get 10 of them that that like so you get 10 of them and you get dud champion of lambholt stone hewer giant as my two rares uh expedition map as 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 one of the showcases which is a common not a rare mythic but we'll talk about that in a minute and you get dud pack dud pack big pack big pack this pack's got five hundred dollars in, in, in cards in it. Oh, right. Well, we're, we're, we're we've opened four packs at, at 100 each and, and, and dud pack, dud pack, dud pack, $500 pack. Well, I just got $500 off of spending $400. That pays for the next pack, which, which breaks even a hundred dollar pack. And, 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 and it's like, you go through that and you say, by the time you get to 10 packs, man, you've made 500, 600, $700, you know, and this is good, better investment and this and all this stuff. And it's like, 
that is not the the meta I want to play. And 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 I think much more about the kid who goes in and spends and spends a hundred bucks on one pack and gets fifty cent rares, and then that's it. And it's like, well, you should have spent I mean, more. You should have spent more, point, bruh, bruh. You should have yeah, spent yeah, more. Your, your, point, your point was driven home when you mentioned that ten of these packs, a thousand dollars, and I hadn't even stopped. That hadn't like it's, it's an obvious statement, obviously, but it hadn't been something that anyone had said out loud to me yet. Yeah, and I'm just like, well, yeah, that's a good point. A thousand dollars for ten boosters. But but bro, um, if you open if you open those ten boosters at a thousand dollars, you might walk away with like fourteen hundred dollars in cards and, and bra, that's good money, bra. You know, like so what are you talking about? No one's forcing you to buy it, bra. I guess you know? I guess I guess at this like, point we should we should talk about very briefly the price of VIP. I mean both of you and I have both done videos on this that both came out the day that the announcement happened. Right. Like I had finished work and the announcement happened at four o'clock. And I was like, "Oh boy, that's I knew it was coming." Here so, we go so, again. So, 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 the, yeah. So, the, to clarify from the, the, the exact stance of mine in like two sentences, I guess, or three, is that we knew the rumored price. I saw the rumored price. I saw what was in it and thought, "Well, that's not what I expected." I spent for a hundred dollars. It's going to be something quite significantly different, upwards towards us, a secret lair, some certainty, something very special. In it. I don't know. Right. And then I just basically made a video being quite angry, I'll be honest, and I still kind of am, that I think that we're on some very, I, I hate slippery slopes usually, but we're on some wild trajectory, right? We've right. gone from collector boosters in September to a hundred, for like twenty, thirty dollars or whatever the hell, twenty, twenty-two to a hundred dollar ones now. And I know this is a master set, I know it's special and such, but it brings a lot of baggage and questions like, do we let kids buy one of these? I mean, apparently Americans never question what people want to spend their money on. Not not how I was brought up, nor how I've worked in any of my retail environments or finance and banking environments. But um, yeah, so I asked a lot of questions and I just really put a sour taste in my mouth. And this is someone who likes Masters sets. I have bought a lot of Masters product. I have played so much of it and cracked so much of it. I'm sat here like, these are just absurd. So that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. Um, uh, and I got a whole video on that. Yeah, and I'll link that in the the, the comments. Yeah. Uh, I I also feel that there is a point where you ask yourself, so so what is the purpose of this product? And if you start eliminating things, like even in the non-pandemic, first of all, we've already said in the pandemic, ninety nine percent of people are not going to be able to draft these. So uh, most people are not going to be able to draft the VIP this. boosters. They were better to draft the VIP boosters. Yeah, yeah, the VIP yeah. boosters. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Uh, well, no, 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 no. Nobody can draft the, the VIP boosters. They're not draftable. Mm -hmm. They're they're because all the VIP boosters are are it's it's the normal set of commons in foil, it's the normal set of uncommons in foil, and then it's two of the foil uh, box toppers and 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 two either rare or mythics in foil, and then it's a stack load of basic lands that are full art. The basic lands are non foil because <laughs> let's not go nuts. Uh, and I want to comment on the basic lands because everyone's focusing on the John Avon ones, but the Noah Bradley and never mind the whole sex offender thing and, and sexual predator and, and all that stuff. But just the fact that those particular basic lands are about 30 cents each in non-foil yeah, on, on, on TCG Player. They're under a dollar each. And so, so I... So the, 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 the old collector boosters that you can get Windscarred Crag and the Life right. Lands and the Broad decks in, I was very, very annoyed when I saw that was a thing. These, these are the, the Windscarred Crags. Yeah. Also, you can draft these, Brian, but not a draft. These are Jumpstart boosters, Brian. You take one VIP, no. you take a second VIP, no. you smash them together, it's still and you want a 66 a card deck. Yeah, it's got 20 lands, 66. It's, no, they Good cannot. Enough. It's, uh, no. That's how you high roll, Brian. That's how you high roll. You buy three of them, you set one of them on fire, and then laugh, and then you smash right. the other two together and match your deck. That's high rolling VIP jumpstart. Welcome to Jackass. It's just, I don't know. I, I just feel, I just feel that the idea of this product is not for me, even though they've stopped saying that, still just permeates more and more. Where I just say, well, why am I, why would I buy this? What am I getting? And when you look at things like the support of, you know, this isn't for Pioneer. It's for, it's not for, it, it's got a little bit of commander interest, a little bit of legacy interest. Their sneak attack is one of the, 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 mm -hmm. that's spoiled. That's cool. Sneak attack. Uh, you, when you were over here in person last, you pulled out your sneak attack legacy deck. I had a mm -hmm. lot of fun playing with that. Uh, I was, I've been thinking about building Sneak Attack and Legacy ever since playing with you, actually. I, I really enjoyed that deck. I'd never really piloted it before, and I, I had a lot of fun with it. Deck's so fun. Deck's fun. Yeah, deck's fun. So there's a little bit of Legacy interest in there. 
modern? Does modern still get support from wizards? Is this for modern? There's well, modern cards just, in To here. go back to that legacy thing, so far, percentage-wise, I think we've seen more legacy playable stuff than anything else. Like yeah. Grim Lava Mancer, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Khan to a slight extent with Cloud Post, Dark Confidant, Sneak Attack. Uh, there's a few other things as well, like random things like, um, I guess, Attracts is a very, very fringe thing. Baleful Strix, um, right. Blightsteel Colossus as a, as a fringe thing, Worm Coil Engine. Uh, we've seen one sword, so we'll probably see more. Like And Map as well, Map being a Cloud Post card. So actually, I think so far, this is kind of like probably better than Eternal Masters, percentage-wise, if you carry on at this trajectory of this many cards being in right. it. So it is quite good for Legacy, although... Again, Legacy players aren't known for cracking packs and chasing rares. That's not a thing they are known is, for doing, you know? Is our only problem here the price? Like, honest to goodness, I want you to be honest with me right here. If these were the same nine ninety nine that was established prior to Ultimate Masters, and, and that's it. Never mind VIP boosters. Take the VIP boosters out of the equation. It's literally mm -hmm. just double masters. There's no mention of VIP boosters. Uh, and it's it's nine ninety nine a pack. What's your reaction to this? I mean, we, we'd be losing our minds over these box toppers. Yeah. We'd be yeah. losing our minds too in everything. We'd be losing our minds. I uh, think the actual set, barring the VIP, will be remembered very well. No matter how much we joke and make comments and say how like disingenuous or how, or how uh, not organic the theme feels from a creative perspective. Like all those things aside, I think this set's going to, barring perhaps VIP, VIP is yet to be seen. I think the set will probably be remembered fondly if the previews continue like they are. We could, we could in a week's time. This this goes out on Monday or Saturday or Sunday, and they've just released. They just show nothing but crap. That could be a thing right. that happens, right? But I think it looks, as far as Master Sets goes, so far so good. I think people are very unnecessarily angry about the box topper, like Tron lands and maps and stuff. I just, yeah, I think it is the price. I think the uh, growing price thing. What happens next? Triple Masters? Let's take another rare in for a common and we go up another $5? That's what I, I mean. Like, like I, I think that no matter how much value you give, there is a, a point where you're just charging too much for, for what this is. That it doesn't, it, 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 it transcends the game and then it's not even, it's not a game anymore. And that the finance should be second to the game and not first, and that Wizards looks at things like that GP floor where people are, are, are going nuts for this rare old champs mutavolt that's $500 full art and, 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 and paying it. And they go, why aren't we selling that for $500 mm -hmm. or $400? And I think that's how this came about. And they're, they're like, this is money I left on the table. And it's like, no, it's not the same thing. And, and I also think that it has a limited, the more they do this, the less value they'll be in it. And that the novelty of this is what's still keeping the prices high on that secondary market. And that at a certain point, it's just I don't think those collectors boosters are going to hold value, and I think well, they're, well, they're not slipping. though, are they? Yeah. yeah, the 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 last set, everything is worth nothing. Like right. like foil massacre worms are worth less than non foil massacre worms right now from M twenty one. There's some really weird stuff going on that I can't. Like, I'm not going to go. Into, I, I can't figure out the exact reasons for all this, but it's a weird place to be. That's why but, you need to subscribe to one of those MTG finance oh, things. God, so I'd rather I'd rather puke in my own hands and clap. But it's, but it's this... only nine ninety nine a month, Vince. <laughs> Think this, of all the return on your investment portfolio. This set uh, and future master sets, if they continue like this, aren't going to be for playing with. They are going to be like stimulus or injection packages for traders, vendors, and I guess extreme collectors and, and finances, right? Like, and, that's what and, this is. And that's what they did in baseball cards, and it destroyed baseball cards. That's what they did in comics, and uh, you know more about comics than me. I know I've, I've done a lot of reading on the baseball card uh, uh, collapse. Um, and I can tell you about like yeah. the history of the DC comic book universe. No, no, no. It was the, the, the comic crash. You don't. Oh, you don't know about the comic crash. No, the, I'm, I'm aware there was one, but I can't tell you any of the, the things. Okay. Like, well, I, I, I can tell you the sequences it's... between the crisis storylines and like what happens in Final Crisis and the right, antimatter equation and. <laughs> All right, nerd. All right, nerd. That's enough. That's enough. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, this uh, is this is yeah. not this is not to be played with. And that's that's one of the other things that leaves a sour taste in my mouth. But at the same time, that's okay if that exists sometimes. But also, I'm coming from a perspective where I'm like. I still like to play with those master sets. Like, I want to play with these master sets. If I get yeah. to my store, and I know this for a fact, if I go to my store, and let's say the pandemic wasn't on, I don't think a lot of the local players would want to lump up the money to pay for this. So even people who are willing, like, I would be willing to pay one or two drafts if I've got the spare cash. And, I'm, and that's only because I've got a sickness. And, <laughs> but um, I think a lot of players in my local area wouldn't. And that's, that's kind of where we're getting to now, where it's no longer a draftable thing because people aren't really keen to pay that money up. 
Okay, so I want to talk about the uh, misquote on the rarity of these box toppers, and this is something that people are very upset about, and I, I know you're not as upset about it or at all upset. I'm, I have a few <laughs> thoughts on it, but basically okay. they said that the VIP packs are going to have uh, 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 two rare slash mythics from the set and two rare slash mythics uh, box toppers. So four rare slash mythics in them. And then it turns out that they have made box toppers of commons and I believe some uncommon cards yet to come. Yes. Eight, uh, I believe. Eight yes, eight. We've seen four. And, and that now the expedition map and the Tron lands are played everywhere that they're legal and, and such. So it's not an issue of it being jank necessarily. But some people felt disappointed because they thought a VIP booster uh, that many people have already pre-ordered is going to have four honest rare slash mythics two of which will be box stoppers and that now it's well it's two box toppers and eight of those box toppers actually are common or uncommon cards that we have just upshifted to rare for the box topper and there was some feeling of disappointment uh, uh what's your take on that i get that what they said was incorrect and they issued a statement to say what they really meant but like upon reading it and passing it and then before the seeing the map I assumed there would be... I literally, without saying it out loud, I had assumed there would be some uncommon or common going up to it. We've seen it time and time again. Masterpieces and Expeditions. Uh, like, Corehaven, I believe, is an uncommon. Don't, don't quote me on that. Um, we had, like, Lotus Petals and Expedition Maps and Ornithopters and the Masterpieces. We had Box Toppers in Ultimate and Uma. Uh, Ultimate Masters, which were, like, Kitchen Finks, which was a bit of a whiff. But we also had Eternal Witness that's now sitting at, like, $60 plus because it's a really highly playable card. It's beautiful. That's one of my favourite cards in my ADH deck. Yes, yes. We like, know. Uh, look, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The point is, this had happened before, and I just assumed it was going to happen again. And I assumed that's what they meant by the wording. And then when they weren't clear enough, people went mad. And I, I genuinely believe, not to be a armchair psychologist, but I think this is elements of like everyone's in lockdown, everyone's frustrated, people are already know right. about VIP pricing. I think it's just like another straw on that already broken camel's back and people are just lashing out. It's how I see it. I don't want to say people's uh, like, you know, their concerns aren't valid, but this just really ain't it. Like, who cares? Just, well, but do you also, feel differently? You feel differently. I, I, I think that you, you Vince, will feel differently if they reveal. So last time with Ultimate Masters, there was issues where they had put the full cycle of the uh, creature, uh, lands, yeah. uh, creature lands from Zendikar in there, and only two of them, two to three of them, were really high value, and a yeah. couple of them were, were like 10 cent rares. And the box toppers, some people got, I got a lot of them, <laughs> were, were of the, the dud creature lands, and that's a bad feel. And... Mm -hmm. I think that if Expedition Map, at least, is it was previously played everywhere. They just banned it in Popper, which makes me feel bad because I play hmm. play Tron in Popper, not in, in Modern. And so uh, the Expedition Map looks gorgeous. I can't play it in Popper anymore. So that's frustrating. But I think that you're going to feel differently if, if next week, week two, we see some more of these box toppers and they have made something like, what's a real dud uncommon? Giant growth. Giant it's iconic, growth. Right? Right, it's iconic. Right. Okay, that's a really good example uh, because that, <laughs> like, what what uses giant growth? In fact, maybe in modern has some giant growths in there? Uh, no, yeah. modern doesn't play it. Maybe pop, is that a sure. popper? Popper, Popper, Miracle Popper Grow, is yeah. that a thing? Okay, yeah, Giant probably. Growth's a great example. If it sees play, it's it's very, very minimal. It's an I iconic think it's, card. Yeah, it's almost none. It's, it's yeah. something that they might latch on to, something like Giant Growth, and they make some 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 full art Giant Growth. And then the truth is, it's like, oh, wow, that's going to be like $5 in foil or, or, or $10 in foil. And, and then you're like, wow, that's going to be one of my two money cards in uh, showcase uh, uh, box toppers in the VIP pack. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. some real feel bads or, or even something else where it might be like a pacifism or, or something like that, that they're like, okay, it's pacifism. And I think that that will suddenly make it a lot more, Ooh, that's, that's a I, real I, disappointment. I agree. I agree completely. I know when that happens, Tron I will lands, also. Tron lands into Karn, into expedition map. It all goes in that deck. It's all blinged out. It really, I really like that. It's a it full pan of armor to. as well. It's I incredible. Know, it's I incredible. love it. I, I just Have you love seen it. they messed it up? The, the Karn is slightly more zoomed in, so it's not full pan of armor. Yeah, so the, the graphic yeah. design is slightly off. But no, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, and that that is generally yeah that is a concern but it hasn't happened yet and the ones they picked so far are hugely playable like modern and to a lesser extent legacy playable cards with map like these are things that people want and desire i think weirdly i think the concern comes with the box toppers from the actual box because people will want those foils right if you get your box and you get a non-foil version of that map 
and then everyone's chasing uh, the foil one, the map uh, in the box might be worth less, Vince, right? That's more of a concern. Now, Vince, one hundred percent of the box toppers in the bo in the booster boxes will be non-foil. They took foil box toppers out. No, of the that, booster that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm oh, saying. You can't okay. get the foil one, so everyone's chasing that foil one in the VIPs. Uh, so that's going to bring down the price of all the non-foil ones. So that means that the value of a box is now down. Don't forget, Uber ended up being that everyone was like, right. you know what, the value is through the roof. Barring like four misses in the box toppers, they're all pretty good. So yeah, I get, I get it, I get it. But I'm hoping. Uh, Fingers crossed, they're going to be lightning bolts and brainstorms and other like crazy good commons and uncommons that people will want to get hold of in these fancy new snazzy things. But I will also join the brigade when they print giant growth or pacifism or even rancor. You know, I, I, I will get angry too. But lightning bolt, I think, is a great example. We just had lightning bolt as a secret layer that has four different full arts, yep. only one of which by a, a sexual predator, uh, uh, and the other three. That's by a DC. good. That, you know, one out of four ain't bad. One out Brian. of four ain't bad for Magic the Gathering these days. Uh, so we just <laughs> had four full art lightning bolt reprints, uh, and then we've just recently had the GP promo full art lightning bolts. So another full art lightning bolt. Like how many full art lightning bolts do we need? Look, look, how much... I, I just checked it, right? What do you reckon the, the, the TCG average for a mystery booster lightning bolt is? For a mystery booster lightning bolt? Yeah, just... It's a, it's a, it's a lightning bolt. Three, the set symbol it's, I is... I believe it's like two, two, three bucks. Two, three bucks. It, it's $1.10, right? All right. My point is, this card is reprinted like every year three times across right. different things. And it still holds a dollar. Jumpstart, three dollars. Archery Nick up wallets, apparently two dollars. I don't know why they vary so much. And then God knows what the uh, the actual promo ones are. What's a promo one? This is a promo one. Uh, Ten bucks for a non-foil, like twenty bucks for a foil. My point is, this is where I, we always get to, and we both agree on this, so we're just going to like kick a dead horse here. Is that the term? Kick a dead horse? That's no, not it. Anyway, it's a British term. Anyway, we're going to kick the dead horse here. Like, variants and borders and art, that's what you go for your collectibles. You don't have to have things like fetch lands cost a bomb, or your like mythic planeswalkers like Jace cost a bomb. You don't necessarily no. need to do that. I know. So yeah, I think Lightning Bolt's a great example of that because it'll still be worth fifteen to twenty dollars. However, the pricing of the actual packs makes that still feel bad. So the problem still lies on the pricing of the packs. I just and that's think... the, that's me dropping the dead horse. We have that exchange in uh, English as well. We drop the dead horse. Oh really? Do that I have, in America? I've never yeah. heard that one. Do you have beat yeah. around the bush? No, we beat around the dead horse as well. Oh, okay. Well, as long as you're 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 beating around something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> being around a dead horse's bush. I yes, think I think I think that the, the real the real beating around here is being done by Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> yeah, well, they're beating us around the head with sheer value. Apparently, it's great for my portfolio and 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 whatever my stock market. But I don't feel it's really good for the game, and I don't feel VIP boosters are good for the game. I, I don't care whether they're they're worth it or not. I, I don't like them, and I'm not going to buy 10 of them just to get in, in a return on my money. And it's a real shame, because I love that art, and I love that stuff, and I just, I'm going to, till my dying day, insist that all of that can be in the Ultimate Masters booster box, and it can be $9.99. And, and we can leave it mm -hmm. at that. Just leave it at that. And don't tell me that two Please rares... Stop. Please, please stop please, please. telling me two Don't keep rares going. in a booster pack sh is worth a booster pack being twice the price because it's not because it's, so, it's something. Something just occurred to me is that like it's it's the, the playing is the bit we're excited about. Right, we want to play this, and we've we've what said it before on this podcast. What yeah, I know. And we said concept. on this podcast before that it's weird that Arena doesn't have the ability, the flagship online platform doesn't have the ability to play their next big exciting product, but you can on Modo. And I wonder if like. When we get to that stage, when the next mar when we get to like you know Pioneer coming up and similar master sets in the future, whether like that's it, then we can play it. We can get our play fix on Arena, and then the packs will be just like three hundred, four hundred, just collector shop stuff that no player needs because they can't play with it anymore. That might be where we end up. That's everything generally. we discussed in our previous episode about if they were phasing out Paper Magic, that these are all the things we would see happen. The last big cash grab over the last five years uh, uh, of milking it, and then by the time they have what you've proposed, then it doesn't matter anymore because they do they got all their money. And, you and play on arena, play on arena. You play on arena and you collect in paper if you've got if you want a stock portfolio. 
But uh, again, that's all just hypothetical. Vince, what's on the docket for next week? Oh, Pioneer Masters at Arena, Brian. Oh, sh- Welcome to another episode of Dies to Removal. I'm the professor from Tellarian Community College. Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, should I buy the Return to Kamigawa Tiny Leaders Legendary Challenger event deck? N no. Hello, boys and girls, and everyone in betwixt. My name is Vince, otherwise known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet, or as many Magic the Gathering players think of me, the poor man Saffron Olive. But not as poor as post-Brexit England. <laughs>